there such a thing as the Easter bug? Well, there's only one way to find out. With this portable receiver, I can just hear something, but it's very low down. Although, a little bit of height makes a huge difference. First thing we've got to do is establish what direction it's in. If it fades out, you're going the wrong way. Well, down here, it's pretty much dropped out. We'll see if going down to the water makes much of a difference. Well, I've just got to the point where it's inaudible. So, time to head back to where I came from. Yeah, it's a little bit stronger, but still a weaker signal compared to before, when I climbed up on the chair. Coming back to where we started, and the signal's getting a bit stronger, so my bet is it's in this direction. We've just arrived at the local life-saving club, a substantial brick building, and we'll go around it with this receiver and see if the signal is stronger on one side compared with the others. That might give some clues as to the location of this elusive Easter bug. There's a strong bit just there. It's pretty weak down here, but then we are going below ground. I'm not sure if you can hear it on the camera, but the signal is fairly weak and that the wall is about a metre away. Anyway, I'll move the radio towards the wall and see if there's a change in signal. And there's definitely an increase. But then, when I put the antenna hard up against the wall, it disappears. So, there's a sweet spot around here. This is about 60 or 70 centimetres, where the signal is at its strongest. And it's definitely stronger even higher and weaker down here. So the wall is acting as a reflector and if my hunch is correct the Easter bug will be somewhere over there. Definitely on the right track getting stronger but I don't think this dog is really going to help. It's about this point with almost no noise heard that we start to collapse the antenna to offer a bit of attenuation. We'll keep walking until the signal is incredibly strong, even with the antenna folded up. Then we'll have to go to visual clues to see if we can find where it is. I thought this was a strong spot, but obviously not here, as it fades to nothing. But it pays to look, because you might find things. Here, the signal is rock solid. It's moments like these that you feel you want a better receiver, i.e. one in a shielded box with an antenna socket, so you could then attenuate the incoming signal. That's what serious fox hunters use, along with directional antennas. But today though, we're stuck with this receiver, and we'll have to be particularly observant to find the transmitter. It's got to be around here, a quite secluded location, somewhat elevated, and line of sight to various places along the beach. That explained how we could hear it for a fair distance. Here, the radio is useless, as it's full strength. So, we have to look and see if things that look ordinary might in fact be concealing the extraordinary. The Easter bug really does exist. Let's go through the circuit. Right at the left, the first transistor stage is an audio oscillator. It's at about a frequency of around 1 kilohertz. 
That audio oscillator provides modulation for the FM transmitter. This part of the circuitry here is the audio oscillator. The flashing LED interrupts the power to the audio oscillator which gives the pulsating effect. The next stage is the FM transmitter operating on around 88 or 90 megahertz. I took that from one of the talking electronics designs. Look up on the web the Voyager and the Voyager Mark II. Although that's a surface mount bug, I used normal through-hole components. It uses all standard components, which you can buy from Altronics and JCAR here in Australia and their equivalents overseas. This is the transmitter, only using a handful of parts, but it can still transmit several hundred metres. The frequency is determined by this tuned circuit, comprising a coil and parallel capacitor. Because I've got the fixed capacitor here, to change the frequency I need to compress the coil here in and out. It's six turns of enamelled copper wire over a 3mm diameter screwdriver which I use just for winding the coil on. You can get suitable wire from an old transformer or similar. If you want a greater frequency range, then reduce this capacitor value to say 22 picofarad and put in a trimmer of say 3 to 20 picofarad in parallel. That will allow coverage of a much greater range of the FM broadcast band. The other change I made to the circuit, originally the talking electronics design had a 100 nanofarad here and a 1 nanofarad there. That was fine for a voice FM bug where it was picking up weak audio signals from an electric microphone. In this case though, the signal from the oscillator is quite strong and I found it overloaded and splattered the transmitter when it was overdriven. So I just swapped the capacitor values over. That 100 nanofarad shunts most of the audio to earth, but a little bit is still coupled through this one nanofarad. That produces a much purer tone in the receiver. The antenna is a half wavelength of wire, 1.7 meters. That presents a high impedance to the collector, which in this case is fine, because given we're talking about very low currents and around nine volts voltage, then that translates to a high impedance. So there will be a bit of a mismatch, but not too much. If you wanted to use a shorter wire antenna, which is lower impedance, you might be better off instead tapping it off on a point on this coil. And finally, there's some bypass capacitors, 100 nanofarad and 10 microfarad. Values are not critical. Transmitter hunts can be just as fun as Easter egg hunts. Because of the radio signal, you can hide them over a larger area. And you can fool people. For instance, if you were to tie the antenna onto this rusty wire fence, then the signal would be strong for several hundred meters. Then that would make it really hard for people to find. Other tricks could include putting underneath piers or even navigational markers. Today we found that not only does the Easter bug exist, but it's also a lot of fun. It will transmit for several hundred metres, and that's just using a 9 volt battery powering a simple one transistor transmitter. If you wanted to do the audio amplifier thing so that you can pick up, say, bird sounds, then that's an easy modification. You just need to add an electric microphone and a few other small changes in resistor values so that the audio oscillator becomes an audio amplifier. Much more information about all that appears on the web, including in the Talking Electronics website, which largely inspired this construction. And by the way, this Easter egg happened to have a plastic capsule, ideal for building your next bug. If you enjoy building FM transmitters and like to learn a bit more, then consider low power amateur radio. There, you can legally build transmitters with a wider range of frequencies and output powers. Known as QRP, there's a lot of information about it on my website, vk3ye.com. Another thing you might wish to consider is my Kindle ebook called Minimum QRP. There, it talks about 
equipment, antennas, operating and strategy to get the most from low power amateur radio. Over 1,700 copies have been sold and you can get it for under $5 US. Just go into Amazon and look up minimum QRP or follow the link from my website, vk3ye.com.